Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the Woodrow Wilson Center and this director's forum with Tedor Bachonsky. Bachonsky the Foreign Minister of Romania. I'm Mike Van Dusen, Executive Vice President of the Center. Lee Hamilton, our President and Director, is in Indiana and regrets very much he could not be here this noon. The Woodrow Wilson Center is a national living memorial honoring President Wilson. It provides an essential link between the world worlds of ideas and public policy in order to address current and future domestic and international challenges. The Center fosters policy-relevant research and dialogue to enhance the capability and knowledge of leaders, citizens, and institutions worldwide. Created by an act of Congress, the Center is a nonpartisan institution supported by public and private funds. We are delighted to welcome Dr. Bakonsky to the Woodrow Wilson Center. At a time when the European Union is going through some tough moments, Dr. Bakonsky's remarks will be timely, addressing the Union's future and the continuing process of integration and expansion. Let me recognize also Ambassador Adrian Veritza. Uh, Ambassador Veritza has been a steadfast supporter of the Wilson Center's activities with and on Romania. We are grateful for his support and his wise Council. The Center, through its European studies and history and public policy programs under the leadership of Dr. Christian Osterman, continues to carry out activities focused, focused on the strategic partnership and relationship between the United States and Romania, and on the historical legacies of communism and the development of democracy in Central and Eastern Europe. Yearly, in addition, uh, in, in, in cooperation with the Romanian Cultural Center, we, we have three uh, scholars come to the United States from R Romania. The center also hosts every December the Ion Ratiu Democracy Lecture, which highlights achievements of democratic activists from all over the world. Let me also thank Christian Osterman and his staff, particularly Christina Tervetsa, uh, Timothy McDowell and Mircea Mountnu for their help in putting this event, event together, as well as Christina Gaginski of the Romanian Embassy for her help in making this event a success. The Wilson Center has inaugurated a series of programs built around leaders in the world of politics, business, science, and culture, and we call them Directors Forums. Our speaker today is very much in the Wilsonian tradition. President Wilson was a scholar, an author, a politician, and a deeply religious man. Foreign Minister Bakonsky graduated from the Bucharest Theological University Institute in 1985 and was awarded a Ph.D. in Religious Anthropology and Comparative History of Religions from the Sorbonne, and then took a postdoctoral studies as a fellow of the New Europe College of Bucharest. He has published over 10 books in French and Romanian, and he speaks English, French, and Italian, in addition to Romanian. He has been deeply involved, I believe, for some of his career with the Romanian Orthodox Church. Dr. Pekonski served as Romania's ambassador to the Holy See for four years, then as ambassador to Portugal, and finally as ambassador to France. He was appointed foreign minister last December. Dr. Pekonski has graciously agreed to take some questions after he concludes his opening remarks. Please join me in welcoming the Foreign Minister. Thank you. you can stand for your remarks and then sit for the questions. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon to you all. <clears throat> it's good to, to be here, and I'm very much privileged to honor this uh, invitation to address some remarks on the, our quest for a wider Europe here at the Widow Wilson Center. Um, at the historical, I would say, Woodrow Wilson Center, a tribune which has been offering statements, uh, statement and public personalities, among them many Romanians, the opportunity to expose their belief in a better world and uh, I am uh, <clears throat> very much interested to 
open a, a, di a direct dialogue with you uh, through questions and answers after these opening remarks. In his famous 14 points, which played such a crucial role for Eastern Europe and for Romania in particular, Woodrow Wilson uh, set the standards for modern diplomacy in the service of the free. Uh, free. Wilson's 14 po uh, points were a manifesto of free trade among free nations in a peaceful world, where, um, quoting, diplomacy shall proceed always frankly and in the public view. Unquote. The ideal of free trade worldwide among the free nations is still suspended between ifs and when, as the world has been slow in coming um, abreast of this vision. It took the Marshall Plan to turn into reality what Wilson suggested in January 1918. The Europeans put it into practice only in the 50s under the influence of Robert Schuman's persuasive rhetoric. Peace, stability, free trade, a diplomacy proceeding frankly and in the public view, were aspirations uh, that expanded in Europe only after the Iron Curtain has been uh, turned down and the Central and Eastern Europe, European nations return to their democratic Western family. Their people made the choice to return to the West, uh, where they belong, where peace, stability and free trade are based on freedom and values, and the manifestation of their interest reflects these principles. Why I allude to this? Not only because these historical landmarks are so important for my country, for Central Europe, and for Europe itself. I do that because of the important lessons, a lesson we would draw from here. That democracy was and remains a, a pivotal and indispensable element to accomplish and sustain the vision of free trade among free nations. Indeed, long-lasting long cooperation does emerge from shared interests that are based on shared values. Freedom and democracy remain the foundation of free trade, a peaceful world, and hence of our common Euro-Atlantic security. History loves the keen, those who dare see further and better. The policies of democracy uh, enlargement were critical to fix Europe's problems by shaping its realities. When President Clinton came to Bucharest in 1997, we cherished his historical visit in Romania. So we were disappointed that the U.S. did not support Romania's succession to NATO at the Madrid summit. We were not prepared yet. His message was seen as a promise that the U.S. will continue to support Romania achieve its goal for Euro-Atlantic integration. And this has happened. The U.S. has worked together with us and sustained uh, our own transformation. The U.S. has, um, in 1994, we were the first country to sign the uh, Partnership for Peace. Today we are trust, a trusted partner and ally of the U.S. Through our actions, we fully prove that we are equally brave, willing, and able to making our contribution to a better world. More than uh, uh, 1,400 Romanian military serve uh, side by side the U.S. troops in Afghanistan and in uh, the Western Balkans, and we have lately decided to increase uh, to up to 1,800. Uh, till the end of this year, uh, the presence of our troops on the ground in Afghanistan. Since uh, 2005, uh, U.S. permanent military facilities have been hosted in Romania, and in February this year, President Obama invited Romania to join the phase adapted approach missile defense system. The gains of democracy uh, in my own country and in Central Europe overall were possible due, due to the material and moral success of the West. Almost uh, 6,000 U.S. companies, among them Cargill, Coca-Cola, Ford, Colgate, Dell, Oracle, General Electric, Honeywell, Lockheed Martin, Microsoft, has been doing successful business in Romania in the last years. 
So uh, this is a success of Romania and uh, other individual European countries. This has been achieved through a significant of, uh, contribution by the U.S. The last 20 years are seen as our common experience. Today's leaders are called to size the opportunities and incredible possibilities of the 21st century in service of their people. One may say a new historical era is beginning for the debate of or for a wider Europe against the circumstances of the economic crisis, uh, the new priorities of the U.S. foreign policy and the Europe still dealing with the innovations brought by uh, the Lisbon Treaty. I believe that President Woodrow Wilson's vision on free trade between free countries is as valid today as it was a century ago. I would, it would be a mistake to uh, recant now. European construction is to be continued. The United Nations needs to become more effective, a more effective bureaucracy. NATO must to carry on the vocation and capacities to fulfill its task of defending a secure transatlantic space. The stakes are high, and they are everything we stand for. Freedom, human rights, democracy, and the rule of law. Sometimes hesitant voices can be heard complaining that the enlargement of the Euro-Atlantic community would weaken the West and the economic crisis should refrain us from thinking big. The realities prove the opposite. Enlarging the democracy area by expanding NATO and EU has actually brought more security and stability than ever before. Free trade has not made Europe weaker. It has made it richer and has spread prosperity to more people. And uh, it has brought clear benefits to the U.S. Uh, because America has found new friends and allies uh, who did not forget what they owned to Wilson, Roosevelt, and Reagan. That is why we believe that the West's freedom and democracy agenda should not be downsized as security and democracy are not opposite uh, ends. They are deeply interdependent one upon another. Those realities and the story of freedom, which Vice as Vice President Biden called it in Bucharest, is one of the greatest achievements in the modern history, ought to make today's leaders on both sides of the Atlantic less hesitating when referring to the unfinished business in Europe. Let's all remember what Woodrow Wilson well knew, that freedom is contagious, that the only answer to fear, hatred and poverty is openness, inclusion, community. We have experienced uh, them all, we the Europeans, we the Central and East Europeans. Although Romania joined the EU and NATO only recently, our historical experience before 89 impels us to claim the same treatment of those left behind now. Yes, we can say that Europe and the transatlantic community have unfinished business. Further widening the democratization zone in Europe is not an easy task, but an unavoidable one. Those areas are truly important uh, to Europe's future and to our transatlantic collective interests. Continuing engagement by Europe and the EU as alike is essential to sustain the historic work of building a democratic, prosperous, unified and secure Europe and thus to deal with the unfinished business in Europe's back backyard. Democracy does not divide nations, it actually did re, uh, reunite Europe. Democracy and prosperity entail security and stability and they remain essential for the prospects of sustainable cooperation through which long-term stability can be achieved. Romania is well placed to know uh, this for, from its own history and from its geography. Eastern Europe, the Black Sea area, the Western Balkans are uh, in dire need of hope and help of democracy and prosperity. Democracy in Eastern Europe needs support and friends. Why does Romania care about Eastern Europe? It is our neighborhood and Romania's uh, direct nexus. Why does it matter to us, to the, to the EU and NATO as a whole? Let's have a look at uh, the promising developments in the Republic of Moldova, for instance, which has become a recent, recent success story 
following the election of a democratic government with a democratically elected prime minister for the first time in eight years. The new generation of democratic leaders decisively embraced an ambitious reform agenda, which paved the way for a new chapter in the relations between the country and its Western partners. We now have a solid partner in Chisinau, which shares the same values and speaks the same language. Not only for, from a linguistic point of view. Uh, we know, however, that it is not easy to size the opportunity of a new beginning and achieve the transformation of that country. Moldova is the only state in the region which has clearly got, clo uh, got closer to the European Union policies over the last year. Let's steer well this opportunity. One has the, that chance to start anew only once. Let's learn from the past and not overlook opportunities. Moldova's Western Friends have the responsibility to nurture the horizon of democracy and prosperity. Let's help them build it up, construct better road infrastructure, more, more efficient agriculture, sign a new association agreement with the EU, a new uh, free trade agreement, and liberalize the visa regime. Bucharest has applauded the signing of the Millennium uh, Change uh, Challenge Agreement, and so it has a powerful American commitment to building and strengthening a modern partnership with the people of the Republic of Moldova. The basics uh, uh, tough uh, remain. These developments can be sustained only if we help them build a strong, effective and functional democracy. This could further create the conditions for the creative and vibrant authorities in Chisinau to solve the protract protracted Transnistrian problem. Hopefully, the work of the 5 plus 2 format will resume and will become more effective in uh, handling this conflict. As President Obama said in his inspirational Prague address, freedom is a right for all people. For the first time in a long while, Moldova has the chance uh, to leapfrog towards democracy, stability, prosperity, and maybe even a solution of the Transnistrian frozen conflict in uh, the reforms engaged by the new leadership succeeded. Likewise, we have uh, to keep uh, Kiev engaged, uh, w work with the Ukrainian leadership and the Ukrainian people itself, keep Ukraine on the European path, and sustain their efforts to absorb the European democratic values. Work in progress, and still difficult so far. Uh, while Ukraine may be to, to some just another issue on the agenda, uh, Romania, the same as Poland, uh, has a genuine security interest in seeing our neighbor evolve uh, as a democratic partner. We did have disagreements, but we believe that countries who share common values can find solutions and also implement them. Let's take another example, the extended Black Sea region. It is a truly strategic project for all of us. Romania has tried to stay away from political rigidity, constantly thinking outside the box and focusing on the opportunities and attractions of the region as it becomes a highly globalized env environment. We have thus been able to open the way to concrete projects of common regional interest, such as the Environment Partnership under the aegis of the EU Black Sea Synergy. Further on, civil society cooperation, young professionals' education, energy and transport are promising areas for regional cooperation in the years to come. Countries in the region, the EU and the US, could embark on more soft cross-regional functional issues that could also open up the area for cooperation. Empowering w uh, women and enhancing their role in the region's political and social life, combating trafficking in persons, addressing human security, migration, non-proliferation, crisis management, border management, and nuclear security could be smart topics prone to enhancing regional dialogue. At the same time, challenges continue to exist. Respect for territorial integrity and sovereignty and full compliance with international law remain key components for the stability and security in the region. Georgia and its people are valued friends of the EU and NATO. Georgia is Europe. It's not uh, 
<laughs> there is no doubt on that. We shall continue to support in, uh, energetically Georgia's vocation and future in, in the Euro-Atlantic community. Um, obviously, Russia and Turkey are key actors in the Black Sea, both aware that uh, the success of the regional cooperation depends significantly on their involvement. We consider Russia as an important contributor to projects on sustainable development in this area, and uh, we look forward to increasing the regional profile of the EU-Russia, uh, Russia's dialogue with the West. Romania wants to engage with Russia on the premises of pragmatic dialogue and openness for cooperation. The European and transatlantic dialogue and economic uh, and especially energy cooperation in the Black Sea, Caucasus and Middle East needs to consider Turkey as a key partner. Romania is a staunch supporter of enlarging the European and Euro-Atlantic agenda with Turkey on energy security. Romania, as well as, the, uh, as other regional partners, considers that um, American involvement in the region remains instrumental. The U.S. can play an essential part in encouraging all the actors towards an active approach to regional cooperation, and the transatlantic complementarity is beneficial to the Eastern Partnership and the Black Sea Synergy, and could contribute to enhancing integration perspectives for countries in the enlarged democratic European area. Energy is a buzzword of today, and the strategic importance of the Black Sea region is also linked to energy. We see the, the recently established EU-US Energy Council as a forum with a sound political ba backing, which must have an ambitious agenda from which the development of the Southern Corridor must not be absent. One of the most promising projects associated the, to the Southern Corridor, the Nabucco, has um, entered a decisive phase after the agreement has been ratified by all the participating countries, six, if I'm not mistaken. We now need to create the conditions for the operational investment decision to be made by the end of this year. Opportunities in this field um, do not wait indef indefinitely. There is a real risk, for example, that Central Asian energy resources are channeled to the Far East in Europe's detriment. Uh, Romania had intensified its cooperation with these countries, not, uh, not without success. The latest example is the, the agreement on Agri, Azerbaijan, Georgia, Romania uh, interconnector. The Black Sea region and its neighborhood are not only a source uh, and a transit pass of uh, oil and gas commodities. Turning the wider Black Sea region into an integrated energy market will represent a natural evolution towards sustainable development in this region. The quest for diversity cannot avoid the problem of uh, the technological gap exi existing today between the region <coughs> and the developed countries. The Black Sea region can not reach a sustainable development without embracing policies replacing carbon-based fuels with energy efficient improvements and renewable energy sources. This will require consistent investment and financial incentives as well as access to the new technologies. The, this path also requires the removal of non-economical barriers and the promotion of investments in updating the power grill. Romania believes that within the EU-US enhanced dialogue on global energy issues, including the EU-US Energy Council, there is opportunity for attracting the larger Black Sea region countries in programs devoted to research and deployment of clean technolo technologies. That is why Romania considers necessary a Euro-Atlantic program to be launched in support for air and D in partner countries in order to increase their access and capacity to develop technologies from new energy and fuel sources. This program could bridge scientific communities in the region and also expose the outstanding scientific potential in BSEC and Central Asian countries to the Euro-Atlantic community. In the long term, this might prove to be the most valuable transatlantic investment in a new era of energy security in the extended Black Sea region. 
Let's briefly switch focus to another area of uncompleted business, to the Western Balkans. The main topics, one may say, are Bosnia and Herzegovina or Kosovo. I believe there are also more hot issues besides the hotspots. Crisis in Albania, cooperation with the Hague Tribunal, coming to terms with history are questions which have to be addressed if we want to accomplish progress and development. There must uh, not, however, exist doubt about the future of the region as part of the EU. A credible reaffirmation of the perspective of integration will strengthen the drive of, of the states in the region for succeeding in the ongoing reforms and to contribute to strategic stability. Along these lines, uh, Kosovo is not the first issue that comes to mind. I would like to consider the situation of Bosnia and Herzegovina first. The issue here is what new package to devise. Such a package must express our European, Euro-Atlantic and regional solidarity, but also stimulate internal reforms, a common understanding for all citizens regarding the benefits gained from stability. It should furthermore allow them to go to the next stage beyond Dayton. OHR and Althea do not seem appropriate ways to relate to a future ally, a state capable enough to send troops to Afghanistan. A positive perspective for Bosnia and Herzegovina is likely to influence the situation in other areas such as Kosovo. Status aside, the main question there seems to be uh, how to improve the day-to-day -day life. That partially amounts to how to ensure the protection of Serbs without endangering the unity of Kosovo. And that, in turn, involves discussions between the Serbs and the Albanians. To make this uh, as smooth as possible, especially in the, con in the context of the expected advice from the ICJ, we think the EU should take the lead with the support of the US. But we need to be practical and realistic. We may reach a reasonable modus vivendi be between Belgrade and Pristina. Yet, in the long run, the Euro-Atlantic community has to determine a sustainable future for Bosnia and Herzegovina, a state able to, uh, a future, to be a future member of European and Euro-Atlantic structures. As a neighbor, we consider Serbia should be encouraged to progress on its preparation for the European integration. Not having Serbia on this pass will delay, uh, will delay the European transformation of the entire region in a time when the progress achieved must be acknowledged rather than discouraged. Macedonia in, is progressing on its European and Europe Atlantic pass, and despite the prolonged controversies over its constitutional name, the name issue is Greece, we should continue to work in the solidarity for a successful contribution this partner could bring to our regional projects. There are many vexed uh, issues which could be mentioned in the regional context, but I shall stop here. Much has uh, been done for prog progressing on every issue. Much remains to be done, um, and we are all called to follow through. We cannot expect to expand democracy and our ideals to the rest of the world. Uh, if that ideal, which was born in the Balkans of Plato, uh, by Aristoteles and Alexander the Great, does not hold sway of all Europe. A free Europe is a democratic Europe with no grey areas, with uh, no concrete walls, barbed wire, and worst of all, prejudice and hatred separating peoples. I thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Bukonski, and um, I uh, will open the floor. I ask you to identify yourself, no speeches, um, a comment or a question, um, and please identify yourself. And we have microphones that will be brought to you, so raise your hand and we'll, we'll proceed. Come on, you're very quiet. There we go. Uh, down here in the second row, the lady with the brown jacket, I think. <laughs> Thank you, Minister, Minister, for being here. I appreciate your remarks today. My name is Erica Schlager, and I'm from the Helsinki Commission. Um, 
you uh, talked at the very end of your remarks about the need to combat prejudice and hate. And I happen to have been at the uh, second European Union summit on Romani issues that was held in April. And one of the things that was noted there uh, by George Soros is, first of all, the European Union has spent somewhere in the neighborhood of 400 million euros on Romani issues without having very much to show for it, without having any measurable benchmarks. And secondly, it was also noted by one of the EU commissioners that the situation for Roma has actually deteriorated over the last two years. Uh, I think we've gone from a stage where national governments were looking to the EU for guidance on improving the situation of Roma, and now it seems the EU is looking to national governments for leadership. And I'm wondering if you could comment on, on ideas that your government, especially as a, a country with the largest Romani minority in Europe, might bring to the table. Thank you. Thank you for raising a <clears throat> Uh, a real problem for, for all European societies. We have to uh, stop this uh, uh, tennis game between the European Commission and member states uh, when uh, dealing with the Roma integration strategy. Uh, we have uh, uh, declared officially um, uh, the decade of the social inclusion of uh, the Roma population in Europe. Uh, but we still uh, we are st um, still facing a lack of inspiration of how to deal with with that because uh, there are, there are uh, many NGOs we were working on on that uh, uh, register uh, but um, less coordination and. Um, we face, uh, um, in, my, in my opinion, um, a complete lack of vision of how to, to deal on the medium and long run uh, with the, the imperative, moral and social imperative of uh, really integrating these people through education, through um, <clears throat> sort, uh, sorting them of the narrow logic of uh, um, just assist them as uh, uh, some 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 kind of uh, 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 helpless population. We need. Uh, I think the key is the education, but the education takes takes time. Uh, for, for the time being, we have uh, created a national uh, agency in Romania uh, for Roma population, and we have a dialogue. Well, all the public institutions engaged in. The, have uh, been engaged in, in a constant dialogue with the a NGO, which represents their uh, interests and their, their needs and their requests for uh, uh, an improvement of their uh, condition. But uh, I, I don't feel satisfied so far by what, because we, we don't have a clear answer to the question who is supposed to really the nation, uh, national institutions, or at the, the level of the Commission, as uh, Roma communities are living in uh, every, everywhere in Europe, and um, there are some seven to ten uh, countries of origin of their uh, movements in, in within Europe. I think um, we should um, manage to to have a mix between some European policies in that respect and uh, national reactions. Thank you. Yeah, the lady over here, um, yeah. Um, thank you very much. My name is Elisa Gürge. I am a uh, um, University of Oxford PhD student now. And uh, my question uh, for you regards the um, Ministry of Foreign Affairs Fund for Development and Romania's contribution to uh, the wider European strategy for encouraging developing countries from the south, not only, but uh, mainly from that area, to um, from encouraging them, I mean, and, and, and supporting their development. Um, I know that three years ago, the minister, the ministry was uh, involved in the in the fund for. Uh, 
non-governmental organizations for development, uh, and I haven't—I mean, I haven't heard from them for in a while. I know I don't know what they're doing now, but um, I know that several uh, foundations and associations in Romania were concerned with that, and I would like to to know what your opinion is. And I also want to thank you for mm. um, presenting your lecture. Thank you. Thank you. Well, as a new member state, Romania has to engage in a, a consistent. Uh, uh, official uh, development assistance program. Um, it is um, still uh, see as a well formal obligation from outside. I, I don't feel that uh, this uh, important instrument to stabilize the neighborhood of Europe is uh, really assimilated into the current political thinking in, uh, in, uh, in Bucharest. And we are, uh, because of the negative impact of the econom economic crisis, very far from the ideal ceiling of uh, dedicating to, to this uh, official assistance, uh, the development assistance uh, 0 0.5 of the GDP. Uh, concerning your uh, question about the that network of NGOs, but please just send me to, through our embassy here, well, a more detailed uh, uh, question on that, and I will try to, to send you back some, some uh, concrete elements. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, the gentleman here in the beige jacket, and then you can be next. Um, thank you. Um, the Jean Monnet's and Robert Schumann's vision of a united Europe seems to be fading now in recent decades as the as, uh, <laughs> centrifugal forces of separatist nationalism seem to have been gaining strength, almost like a, a balkanization of Europe in certain areas, uh, Bosques and Scots and so forth. How do you, do you, what do you see as the long-term uh, trends as far as strengthening of the EU or its decline? Hmm. Well, we can uh, uh, deplore only the uh, decline of empires. You, EU is not an empire. Uh, it's just a, a work in progress, a uh, very complex uh, bureaucratic program and uh, under the umbrella of a common ambition to survive in the global world. Uh, this is uh, what we are, we are trying to do. I don't uh, see any risk to come back to old-fashioned nationalistic extremist uh, attitudes in, um, in, in all the member states. Uh, on the contrary, there is a progressing common sense on, well, that we, we, we don't have any other chance to, to impose uh, geopolitically EU as a whole uh, if we are not cultivating constantly a sense of solidarity and try through the new institutions set up by the Lisbon Treaty to, to obtain uh, really common positions on a wide range of foreign, European foreign policy topics. And this Takes, takes time, but uh, I don't see Europe, the European uh, uh, Union declining uh, beyond the turbulences uh, of the Eurozone right now. But this is, uh, well, uh, crises are food for thought for Europeans. It's, uh, it's not. Um, yeah. Gentlemen here, and then you can. Uh, Minister Bakansky, thank you so much for being here and for your remarks. Um, my name is Radu Taduku and I'm the president of Global Romanian Students and Young Professional Society. We are a think tank of young professionals and students, Romanian students from all over the world, uh, trying to work towards uh, modernizing and uh, Romania's development. And um, our energy and uh, environment working group has uh, had a fascinating debate about Romania's uh, energy and uh, energy security role in, in Europe. And 
and within European Union. And I know you've touched upon uh, upon this uh, during your remarks, but I was wondering, given that Romania has this potential of actually being the only country that uh, to be transited by all three major pipelines, the Nabucco, the Agri, as well as potentially the South Stream, South Stream. which is backed by Russia, uh, what do you see Romania's role to be? Do you think that Romania could take an even more leadership uh, role in this context? Uh, do you think it as being a bridge between the European Union and some of the countries in Central Asia, like Azerbaijan, Armenia, and Georgia, which, which are not very likely to join the EU anytime soon, um, especially given the challenges that Romania is the smaller country in in the Black Sea Basin, uh, Russia, Ukraine, and Turkey being being obviously much larger. But mm. Romania, on the other hand, is the only EU member amongst these four. Thank you. Well, we will... Uh try to increase our regional profile as a facilitator and a hub of our energy security um, projects. And um, But we need to normalize completely our relations with the Russian Federation and to um, uh, increase the quality of our infrastructure. But uh, we cannot change geography, and um, therefore Romania is uh, really important as a crossroad of the, all these uh, energy security projects. For the time being, I, th I think the economic crisis will, sp will postpone the materialization of all these projects because it's co well, the, the, uh, we need uh, many billions to uh, to uh, realize them. And um, uh, but uh, the debate is more and more focused on that on both sides of the Atlantic, and this is the well maybe the source of new wars tomorrow or. Well, a new global deal of, about how to manage uh, the access of everybody uh, to energy resources and how to organize the transfer from our kind of economy to alternative energies and cleaner energies, yeah, including the nuclear. Uh, the, yeah, the gentleman in the red tie. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, Vlad Spino from the Moldova Foundation. Mr. Bakonski, how do you comment uh, a recent uh, statement of the top EU officials one day before the EU-Russia summit in Rostov about withdrawing the positions of the representative of EU in Moldova in South Caucasus? Uh, so, and the second question, which is linked to that, is uh, on the agenda of EU-Russia uh, among other issues, there is visa liberalization for Russian citizens. And taking into account the passportization of Russia for the citizens of Ukraine, Moldova, and others, wouldn't be have an impact on the EU integration of these countries? And what would be the impact of the immigration policies within the EU? Thank you. Mm. Um, I didn't <laughs> understood very well, yeah, the first question well, but um, uh, as long as uh, the Russian Federation is not a candidate state to the EU accession, it's just a matter of national pride for them to get li uh, the visa regime liberalized. It's, uh, uh, and we have a very low rate of uh, uh, refusal um, and very few, uh, very few Russian citizens will well to create uh, problems in uh, when circulating within the EU. Um, so uh, we support the uh, uh, visa liberalization with uh, the Russian Federation so far, and uh, we uh, demand the same treatment for other countries of the region, uh, starting with the Republic of Moldova. About the EU representative to Kishinev, would you be so kind to rephrase the? Yeah, the statement was uh, that uh, the position for the European Union representative in Moldova, in South Caucasus, are going to be withdrawn, to be il liquidated. And uh, we have such an I don't know. There was a statement of uh, the top uh, foreign policy. Uh, uh, Catherine, what is... Uh, Catherine Ashton? Ashton. Yeah. I don't see any reason to do, to take such a decision. And on the contrary, the EU has the ambition to increase its presence in the Republic of Moldova, and uh, I don't... I'm, I think... Uh, 
But uh, let me check that. I, I, I was here yesterday, and I never, I'm, I'm not uh, aware about such a statement from uh, High Representative Ashton. Okay. Okay. Uh, maybe uh, yeah, two more. Two more. Yeah. Okay. I, I uh, maybe three more. <laughs> yes. Uh, my name is Andrew Surjansky. I'm correspondent with IDAR TASS, News Agency of Russia. Uh, Mr. Minister, uh, uh, Romania uh, has been negotiating. Sorry. Uh, Romania uh, uh, has been negotiating a border agreement with its uh, closest neighbor, Moldova, for I think uh, 15 years. Uh, what are the chances for conclusion? of this agreement anytime soon. <laughs> and uh, secondly, uh, briefly, uh, how would you describe the, the, uh, your relations with Russia? I mean, the uh, level of political and uh, economic uh, cooperation. Mm. Thank you. Well, uh, we have a completely renewed uh, bilateral relation with the Republic of Moldova um, because, the, as I said, uh, in my remarks previously, uh, we have the uh, new government, pro-Western, pro-reform oriented, and um, uh, we um, have completely normalized uh, our relation uh, with uh, Chisinau, uh, opening um, this autumn uh, cultural institute, Romanian cultural institute there. Um, we have uh, signed an agreement uh, for financial assistance for four, four years for up to uh, 100 million euros just to help them to um, manage the economic, uh, difficult economic situation internally. Uh, and we will mo modernize all the legal framework bilaterally and uh, we have created in Brussels a group of informal group of friends for the European uh, pass of the Republic of Moldova, and we <coughs> work together with France in in, uh, in this respect. So we are optimistic they will face early elections and the revision of the, their constitution, but we have to help them because we think that this might be the 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 only maybe success story of the Eastern Partnership because it's doable, it's feasible, it's a small-scale society, we can manage to help them uh, and to, to um, um, make more credible the, the presence of the EU in, in its uh, uh, vicinity. Border negotiations? Oh. They are uh, continuing and uh, there is no red line. We, we are trying to play European in this bilateral fundamental relation for Romania, but mm -hmm. uh, no hidden agenda. Uh, the two ladies in the back, we will conclude with their questions. The lady in, uh, first, right there, uh, yeah, and then uh, in, uh, on the back row. Um, I'm Mihala Lupin. I'm teaching political theory at Carleton College. Um, you are somebody who engages in politics with a very interesting background, which is theology and religious <laughs> anthropology. Mm. And um, very recently in the European space, two very prominent uh, public intellectuals, Jacques Derrida and Jürgen Habermas, are talking about uh, the contribution that religion could make to public reason in European democracies in the public space of dialogue and communication. So I have two questions. One of them is, how do you see the contribution of religion to um, enriching democracy and the dialogue that characterizes the public space of democracies with notions such forgiveness, care, uh, faith even? And second question is, you cannot have a functional democracy and deepening of democracy without civil society. So how do you see the role of the church as an institution in this respect as well? Thank you. Thank you very much for your speech as well. Thank you. Timely and excessively complex questions to be <laughs> asked like that. In, well, uh, yes. That question's a book. Well, I, 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 I uh, sincerely believe that, that in the, the um, fundamental importance of uh, and relevance for any uh, democratic society to, to have the freedom of faith, for, first of all, and, of, uh, and then uh, to have a good, vital connection to the traditions, uh, to the past, uh, which is dominated by the Christian uh, um, uh, fact. And um, uh, 
uh, I believe that uh, the dialogue, well, we need to, to keep this uh, enlightenment uh, principle of the separation of the state, state and church separation because this is uh, uh, instrumental to, to protect pluralism and the neutrality of uh, the public authorities towards the religion. But uh, as in the United States, religion is everywhere and nowhere. Uh, it's everywhere because everybody is free to join any kind of religious community uh, and nowhere because the state is neutral and above all the, uh, the debates and feelings and, and well, about, uh, linked to, to any living religious tradition. I think uh, the interesting uh, phenomenon in, Euro in Europe is that uh, all the <clears throat> um, tensions between church and uh, in, in the church-state relations is um, see uh, perceived more and more as anachronistic, and uh, even in France, which is the, the country most uh, attached to this uh, lay perspective, uh, um, there is a more and more public recognition of the importance of the religion tradition as a key element of the European identity. Uh, last question in the back, Nadia. <clears throat> Nadia McConnell, U.S. Ukraine Foundation. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Foreign Minister, for uh, talking about uh, your ongoing interest in Ukraine. And I especially appreciate you making a distinction between the government of Ukraine and the people of Ukraine, because I think there are significant differences uh, on certain issues. Uh, but in that respect, um, do you see uh, a continued strong engagement or growing engagement of the EU in Ukraine, uh, in civil society, uh, by way of the Eastern Partnership? We don't, we don't really see much yet. Um, and the second question I have is, uh, you mentioned um, territorial integrity, and it was reported in the media, in the media that uh, President Obama, in sending up the treaty to Congress, there was a statement that the question of uh, Georgia, I mean, um, South Ossetia and Abkhazia, need not stand in the way. What was not reported was at a recent hearing uh, on the question of Russia being graduated from Jackson Vanek, uh, Congressman Sherman uh, stated that he would be interested in seeing a grand agreement that dealt with Transnistria, uh, Abkhazia, and South Ossetia for real um, concessions on Iran. Um, are these trial balloons, and have you uh, mm. had any uh, discussions or, or have this been a point of discussion? Thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, you have three quarters, <clears throat> three quarters of the answer in your question. <laughs> uh, well, uh, first of all, Ukraine is the, the biggest neighbor of the European Union, um, a major uh, player, a big country, even if they are still divided and uh, oscillating between West and East. And... Um, but I can ensure that, uh, assure that uh, the European Union is very committed to intensify its relations with uh, Ukraine. And um, as a neighboring country, we are <clears throat> doing our utmost to go beyond uh, any uh, tensions in bilaterally. And uh, we hope that uh, there is a European and... Uh, maybe even an Euro-Atlantic destiny for Ukraine. Uh, I want to uh, thank all of you for being here today at the Woodrow Wilson Center, and a special thanks to Dr. Bukonsky, uh for his remarks, and thank you for the uh, interesting and varied uh, interesting questions you've given. Uh, you're welcome at the Woodrow Wilson Center anytime, and I hope you will come back. Thank you again, Dr. Bukonsky, for being here.